Good evening and welcome to this evening's edition of Globespan 24-7. My name is Tracy Can. I'm your moderator for this evening's program. And tonight we'll be talking about safety and well-being of students and educators in Guyana's school. Um, the reason why we chose this topic, I'm sure everyone is aware of the disturbing incidents that have occurred where students are abusing students and the students are abusing teachers. And also we have some parents abusing teachers. Now these incidents are very disturbing, it's alarming. And so we decided to bring together a panel um, of persons who are able to speak from their experience about what's happening and we're gonna discuss some solutions. Please join the conversation, you can share your thoughts and we're gonna be sharing them on screen as well on this issue some of the solutions what you think can be done and just generally you can weigh in on tonight's conversation we really would love your feedback um, on the topic as i said safety and well-being of students and educators in guyana's schools i am very happy to be joined by the president of the guyana teachers union and an educator himself mr mark light also i have uh, child's rights activist miss nicole cole and i also have a burby it's a school teacher her name is rosie muhammad she's going to be joining us a bit later now i'm very ex happy about this panel uh sir mark being i would i don't want to use the word veteran because he's not old but he's been in the school system for quite some time and he's now the president of the ghana teachers union he has so much that he can share and also Miss Nicole Cole, she is a woman on the grounds fighting for the rights of women and children. And Rosie Muhammad is an educator. And also there was an incident where her daughter was bullied in school and, and beaten and her um, hijab was ripped from her head. So we're going to be discussing the issues in the school system from these angles. Um, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, for having us. Tonight. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you all. And Happy New Year to everyone who is watching tonight's program. This is uh, my first program for the new year. So I just want to go right into things. Uh, Sir Mark, your thoughts on what has happened in the school system overall, not just against teachers, but what, what, what has happened with the students? Um, and recently, one of the a student was stabbed, and she's still in the intensive care unit at the Linden Public Hospital. What, what are your overall thoughts? Okay, good night, uh, Tracy. Good night, uh, Ms. Cole. And it's so good to be on panel tonight to discuss this very, very um, important uh, topic an issue that is affecting our schools across Guyana. And in fact, um, around the world, um, we see that this is an, an, an increasing issue that is affecting education. Um, I want to say that this problem is um, really, really getting to the, to the state where um, we have to find solutions and find those very quickly. Uh, but firstly, I believe that these issues are arising out of what children are seeing in their homes, what they are actually seeing in their communities, and they come to school and they try to rehearse those very practices. Also, it has to do with some of the, the, the activities that they are engaging, the games, the movies, um, and, and these are having an impact on our school system that does not support um, children uh, being being told that these are not acceptable behavior. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of arresting it. But if I get straight to the, to the bottom of it, I believe it comes from what we what the children are actually seeing in their homes, in their communities, and and and, and what they are exposed to um, in, in in their homes. I, I would say. Um, Miss Cole, what are your thoughts on uh, the recent disturbing incidents in the school system? Uh, my thoughts are that we have reached the tipping point. We have gone over the precipice a long time now. Uh, the violence in schools did not happen overnight. It has happened over time. 
if we want to go all the way back to the child at St. Margaret's who had the rose for his mother. You remember that, Sir Mark? Yes, he had this rose for his mother when another child pushed him down the stairs. This is in a primary school. Yeah. This is in a primary school. And he was pushed down and he died as a result. Am I correct? Yes, he did. The child died as a result. So we have that. If we go all the way back to what happened uh, at uh, Richard Ishmael a couple of years ago, a school child killed. I think it was a parent who went there to sort out some issue. So I am taking you all the way back there to, to, to say to you that the problem that we are seeing now, it has really exacerbated and has reached the precipice. Do you know why? You need to have interventions. And without interventions, then a problem will get bigger. When the coalition government took office, I must commend the former Minister of Education, the Honorable Dr. Rupert Rupnarine. He had in his thought process that they were going to place guidance counselors in schools because it was recognized since 2015 and beyond that there is a problem of violence in schools. Fast forward to 2020, look what we have witnessed. Do you know how traumatized I was watching the knife in the back of, I watched that video and it's like every, you know, I had to stop watch because I gauged up, I couldn't eat. Um, I really felt as though the knife was being plunged into my back. So we have reached this point simply because if we are to take a concrete action, then it calls for political will that you, that, that what you promise that you do. So we need to have, have a conflict resolution method because the violence that, that is in the homes are now playing out in the school and environment. Look at the child who will now paralyze eyes is the more big hospitalized for a very long time we have reached the tipping point and it is time to address this in schools we need to have them there mm -hmm. and if you want you can't have teachers can't wait alone so we're going to get are, into the what? teachers aren't magicians so we to have the teachers cannot wait alone yeah so we're gonna we're gonna Hello? delve into that a little bit more um but what i want to do i want for us to pause and um we have some clips of the recent incidents where um the students were fighting that we want to show you and we are only showing you these clips really? so that we can understand the gravity of this situation this is an alarming situation that's happening in the school system and everyone needs to come together this is not just the teachers or the government um everyone needs to play a part because our two my two members of the on the panel they made the point that the children are seeing what's happening in the home the violence in the home and this is something that they are acting out in the school system so um we're going to take a look at these videos and and again you can weigh in on the conversation share your thoughts if you have questions um you can post your questions share the videos tag someone so that we can have this discussion going and so that everyone can play a part and when we come back i want to have um the panel i want to have them weigh in on these these videos itself their thoughts on them because we had some videos uh, where we had adults they were standing by and they were watching these children and no one did anything i mean We'll talk about it. Let's, let's take a look at these videos. Come on, come on. Oh. 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 
Sir Mark, your your thoughts on those three videos? A couple of things I want to highlight. Um, having viewed the videos um, even before seeing it here tonight, that one of the things we heard emerging from the incident where the young girl was stabbed is about disrespect. Who disrespect? Mm -hmm. And we yeah. have to go back to the root of the problem again. Why should disrespect somebody disrespecting you either by calling you a name or watching you funny lead to a fight? The second thing we have to figure, um, understand here that we had over 20 odd persons, including other school children, cheering them on, watching until something happened. Even with the other mm -hmm. incident with the boys at class, I heard it was over a, a chip, some kind of a planting chip or something. So we have to we have to go chicken foot sorry we have to go back to to figure what would cause somebody to come to the extent where they want to perpetrate violence against another person disrespect over chicken foot that may cost twenty dollars all right um, we we have gone are the days when we when we see girls fighting and we believe that it's over a boy it was made very clear that it's not so so I am thinking that we need to arrest the real problem and let children understand that being disrespected in however way you look at it somebody disrespecting you doesn't mean that you have to adapt to a violent posture there are channels through which they can um, um, place their complaints they, they have to go to their teachers and, and the other thing i want to highlight as well where did that knife come from mm. obvious child was oh. carrying that knife and it may have been that that this was brewing from a day before or two days before and that was all set up so this whole thing about violence we are actually seeing that sometimes there's not an intervention at the right time to treat with the children and their problems um this matter might have been discussed among their peers nobody thought it fit to go say to miss or to, to the head teacher okay this is coming down let us let us have some way of intervening and the problem until it escalates then everyone blames the school obviously teachers are guardians teachers are like second parents to children and therefore we look out for them but i don't think it's the teacher's place to be going through a child's bag we have to we have to find support systems and, and Ms. Cole spoke about it. 144 positions were identified for guidance and counseling officers to be employed. To date, not, one, not mm -hmm. one has been I not one has been employed. We have to now think about where the are we really serious about addressing these problems? I even said at forums that I would sit, why don't we look at the schools where we seem to have more trouble? We can identify yes. those schools across Guyana. Right. We'll be able yes. to put a counseling officer in every school, but we can place an officer at schools where we seem to have more or more of issues. And and I'm sure with the counseling that is provided by those professionals, you know, those professionals, we might be able to arrest some of the violence we see, rather than leave it up to the teacher to implement the curriculum. To, to be counseling children, how, how would you be able to do all of that? These are different times, and we have uh, to adopt systems, the can't do it alone. systems yes. that are going to help us to create a better Guyana. That's my take on it. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cole, your take on, on those videos. And you had um, in one of the videos, um, from what we could have seen, there was an adult there, and everyone stood by. And now I know there is a concern that sometimes, um, as a peacemaker, you're the one who would end up being injured. But to stand there and to cheer a fight on, what, how, how, how does that make you feel? Um, I feel hurt. That's because the society has slipped very far. The, 
no longer raises the child. Back in my day, that could not have occurred. An adult would have stopped that fight and sent everyone home and made peace. But then what do we have happening? Adults are going into the school and attacking teachers in the presence of children and beating them. You know, I could not believe that I actually am witnessing that. Never in your head it should ever come up for you to go and harm an educator. Two wrongs don't make a right. I've had parents inboxing me, telling me, do you know what teachers are doing to our children? I said, that does not give you the right to go into a school and attack a teacher. So we are teaching the children that it is all to solve your problem using violence, the adults. Mm. So the adult who is standing there, it is quite normal. Do you recognize that it has become normalized? So she, the person is doing nothing because this is normal. It's like if you're watching Gladiator's Flight or WWE on a Monday night. Uh, and everybody out there fun and there's just this glorifying. Uh, they want to capture the moment. And when that child got stabbed, did you recognize how the crowd cleared? Mm -hmm. No one really went to her assistance. Heartbreaking. The first vehicle to pass her was a GTT. It was a GTT bus that passed her first. Everybody left her when she recognized that she was hurt and was looking after. That shows you the level of indifference, insensitive, and zero compassion in our society. How did we slip this far? Where is the village that helped to raise me, that helped to raise Mark, that helped to raise you, Tracy? Yeah. Where is the village? Where has it gone? So I, see, I, 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 I have to say before you before you come in that there are some documents, uh, so there are some policy documents within schools that should have guided. For example, there's a document called Maintenance of Order and Discipline in Schools, which highlights the role of parents. And one of those roles would be to model desirable and acceptable social behavior. And I believe this one ought to resonate with every parent. How can we get our children to model desirable and acceptable behavior? We come right back to parent, um, adults standing by, other children standing by, because that is the kind of behavior, as a kind of social behavior. There are parents who will say to children, he knock your knocky back, he mm. slap your slappy back. And, and, and when things escalate, then it comes to the attention of our, of our educators. So we've got to go back to the place where we begin to say to our adults, our parents, our adults in our communities, our adults in our schools, hey, what about helping children to adapt and, and, and to, to practice acceptable social behavior? Where, 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 where is that now? Thank you. you know? Where is that? Where is that now? And so the documents are there, the policy documents are there, but are they being implemented? implemented. Are they being implemented? And that's just one citation I'm giving you. I'm going to highlight a few more as we go on tonight. Um, I, I, something that really resonated with me to, and... The 144, sorry. Yeah, something that really resonated with me that we all can agree on. And I think I really want for parents to hear this. Um, because, you know, the children, they're seeing this violence in Guyana is so common. Violence in the home, in a lot of homes. It's such a common normalized. something. Yeah, it's very normal. normal. So, and then, normalized. Sir Mark, you made the point that, oh, a parent would say, if he hit you, hit him back. And then when things escalate. So then how do we deal with, because there is also the issue of bullying in school. It, it, it's, a, it's a serious issue as well, where... Children who are good students, um, you know, they're being bullied. They're being picked on. So how then do we deal with, with um, bullying in schools and children being able to stand up for themselves without escalating things? Your, your thoughts on that? Ms. Cole, you can start. You need to have uh, standard operating procedures as to how you will manage conflict. Conflict resolution skills 
And it is simple. If there's a conflict, if there, if you have your crisis manager or your guidance counselor, the students know where to go. Now you are going to have 144 positions and I'm certain that the Guyana Teachers Union was involved in identifying and helping to put those 144 positions open. 144 positions that would have made a difference and helped to arrest the phenomenon. We've got to teach that it is okay to reason. When we go to look at our parliamentarians and they have proper speech, it is okay to resolve conflicts through diplomacy. This is why our countries have ministries of foreign affairs, even though they have an army. Dialogue, 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 violence must never be seen as the first approach to solving an issue. So you have a mighty country, you, they don't agree with you, you're the smaller country, they come to bomb you. That is not right. At Tagore Memorial, where the Muslim child was attacked, it was over disrespect to, as similar to what happened at the Linden Foundation with the fight there. The girls fought over disrespect because one felt the other uh, disrespect the other by calling one a hoe or something like that. Because rights of the child visited, we were at Tagore Memorial on the 1st of November. Speaking to the very of issue of bullying who, who's gonna be in schools. Uh, Sir Mark, your thoughts on how we children... were there um, on the 1st of November. We're going to bring Rosie in as well to talk about that incident and other incidents because she's a teacher in the Burbies area. But um, Sir Mark, what are your thoughts on how are children to deal with um, being bullied? Well, oh. I hear people talk about bullying in these recent times. Well, bullying has always existed in the school system. Have you ever been beaten up at school? Me personally. Have you ever had something take away your time? Remember all at school? Your polori? We have always had bullying at school. It has reached a different level where the bullies are going out there in groups. They are not going mm. out in single numbers. They are going out in groups. And they're Why? actually hoisting themselves on others so it has now moved from a single bully to a group a group of children being engaged in bullying behavior and so we have to look at what our research informs us i believe a lot of times we like to look outside of guyana to see what solutions we can provide but there's a lot of research done by our very own university of guyana lecturers mm -hmm. professors on bullying and anti-bullying um, strategies that can mm -hmm. be implemented in our schools. We always believe that the best things that can happen happens outside of Guyana yeah. when it's not treated our culture. So I believe we have to look at bullying. Yes, it's an issue. It is something that is, is, is escalating where the bullies are now moving in gangs, so to speak. And therefore, we have to look at how we can tackle the Guyana bullies, how we can how we can implement anti-bullying approaches and mm -hmm. strategies to alleviate the problem. We may not be able to stop it completely, but we'll be able to alleviate some of it by putting systems in place. And again, we come back to having guidance and counseling officers who can look at the bullies. And, and Thank in every you. school, Thank every you very school much. You might have Thank a handful you. of children that are, that are, that are exhi ex exhibiting this kind of behavior. Maybe they see the bullying in, the, in their community. How do we arrest the problem? Our teachers are not fully equipped, and I must say, our teachers are trained, yes, but they're not fully equipped to treat with all the challenges that children do have. Yeah. And we must treat with that. We like to blame teachers, but the problems that children have today that causes them to behave the way they do, we've got to have the professionals who can deal with it. I have, Thank you very um, much. And it's I coming have, from the home environment. As well. It's coming from the homes. I have uh, Rosie Mohammed. Our homes are violent. Rosie Mohammed is a teacher and her daughter was recently bullied. There was a video that went viral where the her daughter was um, beaten, her hijab was taken off and all of that. And um, 
So, Rosie, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. I just want for you to weigh in on the issue of bullying, being a teacher and a parent who um, experienced this firsthand and having to deal with your daughter still as a result, the trauma that comes with it as well. Hi, good night, Tracy. Good night, everyone. Um, Hi, good night, Tracy. Well, on the 9th of October 2019, my daughter, she was bullied by a gang of girls in school, in the school compound, on the pavilion. And children who are bullied, their, their life, it's not, they're not, their life, not the same again. The parent life is not the same again because when your child is being bullied and your child is traumatized, the fear that is with them is there for a very long time. And you as a parent, if you're not strong enough to support your child, you can lose your child. When my daughter was bullied in school, the video went viral. The children were posting it up. They were making fun of it because they ripped her hijab off. They were trying to take her clothes off, the gang of girls. And the way the matter was dealt with, I am not satisfied. I was told that the file was prepared and sent to DPP. I'm still waiting to hear from that office. But with this recent incident where that school girl was stabbed with a knife, and to see that the extent that this violence in school gone to, it's, it's, it's really scary for our children in school. Parents, as a parent, the fear that you have to send your children out there now it's like you could do you're gonna send your child to school today but you don't know what's gonna happen anymore you don't know what's gonna happen next because these children I don't know where they get it in from because they're not thinking just beating one another in school I'm sure about that because just don't beat one another in school if they have these two they do it privately so most of this comes from the home and again like Sir Mark like said that it comes from the home they're seeing it and if you do a background check you will see that the parents of these children, the children are not brought up properly. The parents, they're at fault. And we should hold the parents accountable for their children's actions. And the children should be penalized for what they did. They should be suspended from school or some serious punishment should be given to children like this. Like when my daughter was attacked, the children were given three days suspension. You know what they did? They laughed and they said, oh, we're going to go home and rest. So the children, they don't have fear in them. And sometimes you might look at them and, and you're going to wonder when they get older, what's going to happen, what they're going to do. If they, they're 15, they're 13, 14, and 16. When they're 20 and 20 something, what they're going to do to other people? It's really, really scary in the school system. Because if they can attack another child with a knife, sooner or later, children will be attacking teachers in school and we're not safe in the school. The children are not safe, the teachers are not safe. And how will we deal with this? Everybody uh, is saying, oh, we having, we're having, going to have counselor in school. One counselor, one welfare in school can't help that. Children back need to be checked at the gate. Parents need to be more serious with their children at home. They, parents need to step up their game. They need to be really, really serious. Because vigilance. you cannot injure another child, you know? You, you gotta I agree with you. Yes, I, I mean... As a parent, my parents got to step up their game. Yes. They need to step up their game because sooner or later, those, those children, when yes. they finish attacking their other friends in school, they'll be attacking the teachers. They, they, people, everybody is saying, oh, this is Guyana. Guyana used to be so safe. Only in America used to find these kind of things. But we don't want that in our country. We don't want our children to push anybody down a step and kill them. And then we're not going to penalize that child. That child needs to be some form of punishment needs to be given to these children. They are not children doing They are little monsters. Okay. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Sir Mark. Yes. I'll let you win, and then we have to go to a quick commercial break. But well, go ahead. I think this makes valid points, but we have to think about, we have adopted a lot of the North American policies as it relates to our education policy. Oh, yeah. Without putting the relevant and the requisite uh, mechanisms in place, we spoke about checking children's bag. We do not advocate from the union perspective for teachers to be checking children's bag. We have to have a security no. system. In exactly. the schools in North yeah. America, in the schools in North America, the children pass through a metal detector. They mm -hmm. have armed security. We have some security, and, and again, we're going to talk about that as we A proceed. metal detector. Some 
security system, some security personnel. I have had I have had security personnel tell me, sir, if somebody comes to attack teachers in the school, I'm going to run for us. They are least equipped. We're looking very bad here. That is, so that is a, a serious issue, and I'm going to shed some more light on that. Um, as you you said, you're going to go to a yeah. commercial break. So I'll uh, get here. Thank you guys so much. These perspectives, um, uh, they're so Tracy, interesting. Tracy, just before we go. Yes. Tracy, before you go, I want you to remember that the violence in the school have gotten to the point whereby Dr. Brian O'Toole is nursing a a lifelong yes. a teacher was shot an educator was shot yes let's that, that's indeed that. let's not forget thank you for school reminding of us of that at school of the nations where um dr oh, yes. was shot he was oh, almost yes. killed even though it's a private school it is violence in school in school yes. yeah Yes. A teacher was shot. Yes. All right. So we're going to continue the conversation. So interesting. Thank you all for the persons who are weighing in online. Continue to share your thoughts. I have. Let me read some of the comments really quick. Um, Kevindra Tularam says, too many issues with the system are politicized and are being pushed under the rug to avoid the embarrassment of the head teachers and school name. Um, what else we have? Omar Salman. It's not the teacher's job to micromanage students' behavior outside of class. Parents need to train their kids properly. And we also have Banmati Jean Ram. It would be good to have schools a welfare officer on this panel. I'm aware that they were on the ground in Linden as part of the investigation and providing counseling. And I just want to say we were supposed to have Mr. Blackman. He is the public relations officer at the Ministry of Education to give a perspective from the Ministry of Education and what they're doing as well. Unfortunately, some issues arose. He could not make it. Um, Minister Henry also tried to be here, but she has some other matters she's dealing with in Burby. So unfortunately, we don't have anyone from the ministry directly, but hopefully we can get that. What we're going to do, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Um, you all stay tuned and we're going to continue this very interesting conversation. I'm, I'm so really thankful for this panel. I think it's a great panel and the perspectives that everyone is given, very informative. So we're going to be right back. Looking for an embroidery service or advertising services? Look no further than Inspire Incorporated. Get your very own personalized items that include rubber stamps, ID cards, mouse pads, diaries, polos, office wear, and so much more. Create your own logo or messages on any subtract. It's very quick and efficient. Call Inspire Incorporated today at 222-2042 or visit at 62 Area Q, Turkine, Guyana. This newscast is brought to you with the kind compliments of Travel Span GT with locations in Georgetown and Burbies. For all your travel needs, call Travelspan GT at 327-1701, located at Lot 3A North Road, Georgetown, between Camp and Wellington Street. In Rose Hall, call 337-4287, and in New Amsterdam, call 333-6230. Call Travelspan today. Welcome back and uh, thank you all for staying tuned to the program. Our topic, as you have seen, we've been discussing safety and well-being of students and educators in Guyana's schools. Um, thanks again so much to Ms. Nicole Cole, uh, Mr. Mark Light, President of Guyana Teachers Union, and we're joined by phone, um, teacher Rosie Mohammed, And we have been discussing the various issues that um, we think are contributing to the violence in schools the point that is heavily made and supported by all is children are seeing the violence at home in their community wherever they are interacting a lot and this is something that they are acting out in the school system and so students are attacking students parents are attacking teachers students are attacking teachers as well and uh, miss cole also highlighted when we had that incident with the um a teacher of school of the nations where he was shot and almost killed mm -hmm. thankfully he wasn't and then the latest incident so disturbing and heartbreaking where that um student from the linden foundation she was stabbed and she remains in the intensive care unit at the linden public hospital we're all praying 
for her. We're praying for the family as well, um, for her speedy recovery. Minister Henry and we had a, a team going there to visit the student. And, and so we, we just wish her all the best. And the other two girls who were involved, they were arrested. Um, I believe they still remain in police custody and the police there wait an advice from the director of uh, from the DPP to see you know the way forward so we're just we're just hoping for the best for all of them uh, one of them one of them was released uh, because of the age uh, remember the new juvenile justice bill you cannot charge a child for no offense under the age of 14 yeah so this is new the new juvenile justice law okay so one of them was was really uh, really, this is why nothing happened in the case of the uh the alleged sodomy that took place in a school toilet where two boys attacked another boy it has to do with the age so they cannot be charged and our at new all juvenile justice law they um 14 and above the new juvenile justice law is what we need to wrap our heads around which makes the age of criminal responsibility puts it at 14. Oh, wow all right um that's something that we need to yes. get into as so well and we need to, to discuss that and, and this is why we need to have more uh diversion methods you see the 144 positions that was identified is part of the very diversion methods it's part of the of a solution to deal with the problem i must commend uh the honorable dr rupert Rupnarai. he really he was pushing it to have those positions filled still needs to be filled mr light we still those need are jobs fill. those are jobs and you know i know a lot of people are talking about not having a job so um, there you have some information on some ways in which you can get some jobs. I want to talk about the incidents at the schools. And, and um, Sir Mark also highlighted the school system over here. The children, they go through a metal detector. And of course, the, the level of violence is different here. But then we're seeing that in Guyana. Are we going to wait until it escalates to the level it is here before we really take things in hand? And before I, I get the panel to weigh in on this, we want to play... Um, some stories that were done by Royce and Drake's uh, for a news in depth on the incidents with the teachers where the teachers were abused in school. Let's take a look. Pandemonium broke out at the St. Agnes Primary School this morning following a confrontation between a teacher and the parents of a student of the school. It all began after an altercation between two classmates at the school. This news also understands that one of the students was injured after being kicked to his groin area and began passing blood. The teacher rushed the lad to the Georgian Public Hospital where he was treated and given medical attention to stop the bleeding. We are upset, we are angry, and we are not going to allow these matters to rest. It seems as if, it seems as if, it seems as if this is the new medicine that is being shared across this country where parents can walk into schools and beat teachers. Well, let me say to all and sundry, I'm really upset. But let me say to all and sundry, it will not happen again in another school. It will not happen again. Yes, those were just some clips from the incident in the school in Georgetown where a teacher was attacked. And you know what's really disturbing is that uh, the father of that student was seen kicking the teacher. This is a man. Um, Sir Mark, can you weigh in on this? Well, again, it cannot be it cannot be an understatement as to what prevailed in the community, what prevailed in the household. Um, we need to recognize that this these are the practices that are meted out there, and our laws, for example, the individual was charged for assault, which carries a penalty of ten thousand dollars bail. If the man pleads guilty for an assault, uh, he pays a fine. In this instance, he pleaded not guilty so he was sent on bail for ten thousand dollars so where are we heading with these these serious offenses we have to go back and address our laws we have to look back at constitutional reforms in 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 no country should a parent walk into a school and assault a teacher 
in no country around this And then the teacher is the charged is for defending herself. It, you know, the teacher, at, let's no, talk about the teacher. No, that's as, the uh, stupidity teacher. in the law. That's the stupidity in the law. I, yes, no, they yes, are Mark. the laws than us. I'll, I'll bring you in, Miss Cole. Yes, sir, Mark, you were saying on that particular uh, issue that you're defending yourself and you are charged. But, but let's, take, let's take the teacher at St. Margaret's. St. Winifred, sorry. Mm -hmm. For gardens. Yeah, get a school right. Win for garden. That teacher was hit on her head. She was stomped on her chest and she did not defend herself. And yet for all, she was charged for assault and, charged. And, and, and not keeping the peace. Peace on the deal. Now, where is the law? Where is the law? Now, teachers and the union would now have to look at our approach to this. Because if in our workplace, you come into my workplace and you assault me, you wound me, and I don't defend myself, I'm charged. If you come into my workplace and I defend myself and I'm charged, we have to take a position on this. But the law has to be reformed. But it is the union is the union to going to take is the union going to take any drastic um, step to ensure that justice is served? Because I mean, the police, the investigation obviously was not done properly by the police. Yes, that, that's one of the concerns we have. The easiest thing the police could have done was to charge, charge everyone. The group of individuals. But we we are looking at. Have you we, tried uh, meeting with the commission at, of police? Yes, we tried to meet with the commission of police. We met with the commander, and we are looking at ways in which this can be addressed for the future, because we believe that when Something these is wrong there. other parents are going, and we've yeah. had several other incidents. Just in my county here, um, at Oval Inning Primary, a parent went into the school last week with a two by four. Wow. With a two by four. Wow. So persons are seeing that nothing is happening and therefore they are going into the schools to, to, to assault our teachers. And therefore we got to put our foot down on it. And the union is addressing it. We have legal support provided with, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education for those teachers that have been charged. And we intend to take civil action as well okay, against so those parents. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Mark. We have someone who is coming in via phone. They have a question. So I'll just bring that person in very quickly. And then I, I'd like for uh, Ms. Cole and Ms. Mohammed for them to react. Hello? Yes, hello? Hi. Good evening. You're Hi, on to the show. Hello? Hi, Tracy. Good night to you all. Good night. Good night to everyone. My Good main night. question is, listening Good to night. the program, is very interested to hear you guys have this program going where it's the benefit of the kids and the future in the country. But my question is, if there's a juvenile, which I just heard Miss Nicole said it just now, they have a juvenile law to protect that juvenile, then what would eventually happen is that these kids on the 14 will know that they can do anything and they're above the law so they won't go to jail then now that brings out the worst in those kids whether some parents have an upbringing of those kids whether they're at home or out to do their job but then if a situation occurred like such as a stabbing you know it's it's a different story because if you have a loss to protect them you do like what the united states have because all you have to do is you put them in a juvenile detention center and then you allow them to go through trial so when they see that they're being penalized and punished for yeah. such hideous crime they have committed then they will realize because as they go through juvenile detention center they get counseling it's like a kiddie jail but it's not basically going to jail but if they did, let's say of such the little child that got stabbed passed away then that is something shouldn't be dealt with easily because then it's a it's it's become That's setting a precedence uh, exactly so you you have to set these principles i remember going to school in guyana where kids when you're thinking about doing something to someone else you know that you're going to get lashes saved now you have child services where you cannot hit those kids and stuff. 
Then, for example, if I'm a parent and my kid get hurt, for example, get stabbed, like um, Mark said earlier, a guy walk into the school with a two by four, it's only lead a parent to react towards that. So for all of that, it's it's where it comes down. They have to, the, the, the system of not punishing a 14 year old has to be removed and let them go and let them know that there's harsh penalty according to how you ending up deal and do whatever you've done to hurt someone. For example, okay. if you just punch someone is understandable, but that would be my question. Okay. Why was there a law put in place to defend juveniles? It only allows them. So what are there in place now that the young lady that got stabbed, what are they about to do? For her. So we'll have Miss Cole. Miss Cole will um, react. Uh, Mr. Khan, place. thank you so much diversion. for your question. Okay. Yes, Miss Cole. We'll yes, touch on that. Diversion. We'll touch on that. Um, we'll touch on that a bit briefly, and then we'll continue with the the, the conversation. But well, all of this is a part of the conversation. So, Miss Cole, if you can touch on that briefly for Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan, again, thank you so much for um for calling in um, and sharing. I want good. I want Mr. Khan to understand that previously in this country, nine and ten year olds were were locked up nine and ten year olds had their lives taken away from them mm. we have had juveniles who have been locked up um for years and not even had one day in court and would have spent seven years on remand for a crime that never was called in a court of law the new juvenile justice act is a progressive law aimed at enhancing the rights of children guyana is signatory to the un convention on the rights of the child we have done so and ratified this convention since 1980, having signed out it in 1979. There are methods in which you treat your children better. So we have diversionary uh, 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 measures. So, so for example, if we have children who are prone to engage in violent conflict, then we identify those children and of course, through the placement of guidance counselors in the school system, we have those children get the attention because more than likely the child or children who are engaged in bullying behavior is a child who is seeking attention, a child who has been neglected, a child who perhaps have experienced bully themselves. So, so but Ms. Paul, I just want to come in. Now, uh, exactly now perpetrating it sure, I, I do it. i do understand what you're saying but so therefore we have there are no penalties for these children even though i i understand you saying that um children at the age of 10 i mean you know um that's of concern you they were nine and ten year olds locked but up. then when you you're dealing with a 14 year old, year old, old who stabs someone's child in, in prison we are dealing with we a 14 year old who stabbed someone's child with a rambo looking knife and you sent her home and there's nothing like i want sir mark can you come in on this what are your thoughts on that i i think um children as minors we must have a reform system and not just provide a way of escape for them having committed a crime having them commit a crime and then because they are below a certain age that they walk free what are we doing to help them reform and therefore if you have a holding center like we do have the um we have the noc yeah. in essequibo the new opportunity core and that is what miss cole was saying many of our children were banished away at the new opportunity That's core true. for a year yeah right without any intervention they go there they reach with other hard hardened hardened season um young Offenders, people and yeah. they get worse right but there's no intervention you know and they were they were, they were a lot of things uh we are told went on the some of them got raped yeah got pregnant yeah and, and nobody could have you know, infected so, so mm -hmm. we really hadn't a system to help those children now that you have this juvenile um uh, a protective law then we can find ways in which we can help those children if there is a 13 year old who's involved in the stabbing that child should not be allowed to walk free but given the requisite reform reformation that he or she can change that kind of behavior yes. and 
standard can be sentenced okay. to probation um there is something called uh different you call it the diversionary uh measures so it's mandatory for that channel to undergo a series of various interventions with uh, a of professionals that even looks at the mental health now if a child is charged that child have to undergo a psychological evaluation now, Tracy, and this is progressive. The yeah. new Juvenile Justice Act is looking to deal with children in a more humane yeah. way, not like how it was dealt with before. So it is good for them. However, what we are grappling with is the human and financial gaps in the system because here is Mr. Light highlighting 144 positions that have been made available but mm. have not been filled and still needs to be filled we must hit on this and and we'll talk so, about uh, I think Tracy, we sign on to I'll we bring sign you in on a minute Rosie because I know you definitely have a lot to say we sign on to a lot of conventions without the support system and I think that is where we are failing do we have a juvenile holding center there is something in Sapphire where there is um, our juveniles are placed there temporarily. But do we have a, a holding center for these kids that may have committed a crime to help them? And do we have the professionals, the psychologists to help those children? Do we have the people uh, that, that are qualified in mental health to provide the necessary uh, a support for those children? Very valid so point. We have to all of that. Rather than just look at a system and say, look, we're going to protect the children. What are we doing to help them in the long yeah. run? Yeah, I want to bring, yeah, go ahead, Sir Mark. Yeah, because it's I want to bring, our... one minute, Miss Cole. I, I just want to bring Rosie in really quick because. We're in a crisis. What yeah. you're seeing here, the children are in a crisis. I want to bring Rosie in. Rosie, your thoughts on how we should deal with children who um, perpetrate these violent acts? I feel that the system is protecting these children who have done these acts. And they're not giving out enough help to the ones who have been the victims. For example, proper counseling and not giving to these children. And we are focusing so much on protecting these children that have already done these acts. We need to help these children, the ones that have been the victims. We need to help them. and. And we need to put some sort of punishment on these children that have done these acts. And in, in the process, they need help too. They need counseling. They need yes. assessment to see what's going on with them. And, and, and you know, we need, to, we need to focus on the people who are hurt. We're, we're more focused on protecting the ones who have done these things. For example, look at a teacher. She was beaten in school. And, and, and what was the end result? She was charged. The parents was so pompous about it mm -hmm. was all happening because he just got a ten thousand dollar bill so the system is failing us the system is failing all guys and we need a proper system to be in place we need new policies we the guy need people need to be protected our children need to be protected in school teachers need to be to be to, to feel safe in their workplace teachers go to school with fear in their mind Parents send their children with fear to school. And who are we protecting? We are protecting the ones who are going to come and attack us. And we're not thinking about the one who's doing so much for us, our teachers. We're not trying to protect our children. Policy needs to be put in place. It's not protect these children. Uh, more gross. children are going to come out and want to attack other children. More bullies going to be born. More parents are going to want to go in school and attack teachers. Teachers are not safe. A lot of teachers saying, I'm in the system. Um, if a parent should come and beat me, I will beat the parent back because in either way, I'm going to get charged too. So what, where that are we going? Where are we going? Our zone. It, indeed, indeed. Where, where are we going? I, I know Sir Mark, Sir Mark wants to weigh in on this. Where are we going? I was, I was, just, I was just saying that we need to create a balance. Um, we need to look at the victims and the perpetrators and find a common way in which we can treat with all of them. Because obviously... Children, some of them do not know the consequence of certain actions. They are minors. We all agree that because of their age, then you have to treat them differently compared yeah. to an adult. But at the same time, we need to create a balance on both sides. <laughs> They're smarter than both of us. 
trust me, they know exactly what they're doing and the things they would be doing, we won't even think about children nowadays. They and I think that's the point that Sir Mark is making, Rosie. I think too, while I understand how you're feeling from you know an emotional standpoint and this has happened to you and I told you I don't know personally how I would have dealt with it if it was someone for me. But because we're adults, we're not going to do certain things because we have a full understanding. But, you know, these children, they're still developing. Go ahead, Sir Mark. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think what needs to be understood is that the chil they are children. Children will always be children. Yes. And we can all recall when we were children. We did a lot of crazy things. When we look back now, I, mean, I did this, I, I wore that, I went there. We, 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 were, we were once there. And yes. though we may say that they are smart, they are, they are smart with technology. They are smart with a set of other things. But are they, are they smart enough to understand the consequences? Do they understand how significant and... and, and, and how significant certain actions are going to be towards their, their, their future in terms of affecting them in their future. And so sometimes unless they get involved in the activity, they, it doesn't hit really home for them to understand that this thing has grave uh, consequences. So that is why I'm saying we need to create a balance. We need to educate our young people more. We need to have forums so that our young people can be engaged, hear what they're going through. And another thing I want to stitch in here, we talk about a home. Let's let's look at the Guyana scenario. I am a teacher. I'm a head teacher of a secondary school. And we have a lot of our children who are underperforming. Where do they live? They're living with one parent. They're living with a sibling. They're living in an orphanage. Mm. And they are underperforming because of the gravity of their situation. They are going through a lot that they cannot even comprehend cognitively. But they are children and they are at school and they create the most problem because they need attention they are with a grandparent and no offense to the grandparent but we all know the the, the, the saying grandparents are poor substitutes for pay, for children and sometimes that that prevails because the grandparents would actually come and say well sir i ain't able with this boy see what you're gonna do with it i ain't able with this girl see what you're gonna do so a lot of times parents Though they may want to help, some of the guardians are unable to, 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 uh, to help these children. And therefore, that is where the professional group comes in. You know, if okay. we're going to have children placed in orphanages, we must have proper orphanages. We must have proper homes that will help to inculcate certain qualities that those children can come out and demonstrate and show that they belong in our community. That is not happening and it has to be addressed. All right, so we're going to have right. to go to a quick break um, and then we're going to come back and we have to wrap things up. Such an interesting conversation, so many good um, points. But I just want to make the point too that we're looking at things holistically, but then when people are personally affected by things too, like is the case with Rosie, you know, she is speaking from a place of hurt. Um, and then when things happen and, and you don't get justice, it, it, it's a hurtful situation because we have to sometimes stand in other people's shoes that if it were one of us, that it was our son, daughter, nephew, niece, how would we have felt? We would have felt the same way Rosie feels and, you know, um, agitating for justice, agitating for, as um, Mr. Light and Miss Skull are agitating that systems are put in place to deal with perpetrators and also victims. And so it's balanced that because they're going to remain in society and they're going to continue to be a problem and years to come, there might be a bigger problem. So we need to address it now. So we're going to go to a quick commercial break. I just want to encourage everyone to support Globespan. Um, you can place your ads on here because Globespan has been carrying the expenses for this program by itself for over a year. And so, of course, we want to continue the programs every week where we discuss these and, and so many other topics. So you can support the program by placing as all of the information um, you'll have during the commercial break. So we're going to take a break and then when we come back, we're going to have to wrap things up. Ever wanted to see Europe? How about London, Belgium, Amsterdam, Germany, Austria, Italy, Switzerland and France? This limited time 15 day tour is now available. With hotel accommodations and daily breakfast, this offer is not one to miss. Call Travelspan today at 212-243-0865. With offices in Queens, Brooklyn, Trinidad, and Guyana, 
Travelspan provides a finer quality in travel. January marks one year since Globespan 24-7 embarked on this initiative to offer a platform that brings in all sides, all points of view, and all concerns. Viewers in Guyana and across the world are participating in discussions that are bringing to light issues relating to social, economic, and political matters that have been plaguing our nation. Globespan's platform offers Guyanese to express their concerns and discuss solutions in the political realm, thereby addressing the polarized situation. Discussions also include social ills, such as alcoholism, domestic violence, and suicides that have been plaguing the people. The platform also mitigates the brain drain by having speakers that live in Guyana and across the world participate in these discussions. This concept will avail a broader view for the benefit of all Guyanese, so Globespan needs your support to offset the expenses. Kindly contribute by clicking the link in the description to help support these programs. Welcome back. Um, here is where we're going to have to wrap the program up and our topic tonight safety and well-being of students and educators in schools. I, I just before I ask you all to give your closing remarks, want to thank you all so much for coming on the show, for sharing your honest opinions, for giving us um, so much insight and knowledge on this issue. Um, very informative, so we thank you. And I will ask Rosie to start off with um, her brief closing remarks on, on this issue, then Ms. Cole and, and Sir Mark. Brief closing remarks. Hi, Trace. Yes, Rosie, you can go ahead. Yes. So, um, what I would like to encourage Sir Mark is to fight harder for us teachers because, you know, your teachers and they are very scared right now in the school system. And we don't want parents to come in school to beat us because some of them are saying if a parent should come in school to beat, then they will fight back. Because either way, you're still going to court and you still got to pay a charge. Okay. And so I know I trust that you would take this matter up seriously. I know you wouldn't um, leave us teachers like that. So we trust that you would, you have our, have, you have us at heart and you're going to do whatever in your power to protect, protect us in school, in and out of school. And, you know, we trust that you have, you're going to take care of the issues. Now, when it comes to children bullying and the fighting and the stabbing and all those things, the violence in school, we need to do something urgently about it. Because if we don't, we actually lost the child lately, the one that got stopped, got forbid, anything worse should have happened to that child. I don't know how the mother would have dealt with it. Because being a parent and seeing your child bleed like that and your child in pain, only a parent who's been through that would be able to tell you how hurtful that is. And for that child, we need to keep that child in our prayers because that child is going to be so traumatized for a very long time. Because the tears and the nightmares are going to be there. I've been dealing with it. And the parents are going to have to stay strong for that child. I'm going to reach with the parents sometime this week, hopefully. And, and I'm just encouraging whoever are listening, whoever is in charge of putting policy in place, that they should act swiftly and do something. Because let's make our school safe. Let's make Ayana safe. Let's not wait until we lose a child before we, we put our foot down. All right. Thank you so much, okay. Rosie. Um, it's called if you can yes, go because we're, thank you. we're we're almost uh, we're we're actually out of time. So Miss Cole and then I'd like to I would just like to remind uh, remind the audience that 144 positions still remains open. It was identified. I'd like to remind that this very government committed to actually tackling the problem of violence in schools and still need to do so by ensuring that those 144 positions are filled. I'd like to commend the, the Tagore Memorial School. They have an, an anti-bullying club, and I'd like to encourage all the schools to set up that, an anti-bullying club. The problem of violence in schools cannot be solved by the teachers alone. Everyone has to be involved. The parents, the teachers, civil society, religious leaders. We all have a role to play. Because as our late great poet would have said, 
Martin Carter. All are involved and all are consumed. We must do something to arrest the violence. Children being violent to children, parents being violent to teachers, and vice versa. It's not good. It is not right for the society. We are in a crisis, and when you are in a crisis, you do things to alleviate that and to do uh, crisis intervention. So what we do need here is action. We need to have the 144 positions filled. Yeah. Get social workers on board because we do make a difference. Social workers make a difference. I'm happy to represent the profession. I thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mark. Yes, I would not like to repeat what my colleagues would have said, but endorse what every word that they have uttered. Um, just to highlight that we need better security systems at our schools. Um, we need to look at who monitors the security services at school. Um, um, so we need to tackle that. We need to also have parents studying the rules of schools with their children. True. Um, in many schools, people give the rule books. And very often, the, there is a void between the, the child and the rules. We also need to recognize that security and safety of the school environment begins at home. The safety of the school environment begins at home. What is inculcated within our children has got to commence at home. We cannot have it done at school only. And I want to say to all Thank teachers, you. the Guyana Teachers Union will continue to agitate for our teachers to have a safe environment. We have begun the process and we will continue. We will not stop until the environment is safe. We will, we will participate in all the programs that are, are, that are geared to ensure that schools become a safe place. And we want, to say to our, we want to say to our parents, teachers are your children's friend. They are your children's parents. They are like your second parents. 18 hours at home, and some of them don't even see their parents for 18 hours, but you see the teacher for six hours. All right? And so teachers are like second parents with the interests of every child. And therefore, we have to work hand in glove to make this work. The security system has got to improve. Yes. The home has got to step up its game. And we have got to put the right supportive personnel within the school system to ensure that our children yes. walk away and live to fight another day. Thank you. Good night. I, well said, and everyone. And parents well must said. check children's bags, Tracy. Check the parents children's bags. Parents must check children's bag. Got it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Got it, got it. And I, so I like, the, I like that you, you highlighted uh, You highlighted that there is an anti-bullying club at Tagore Memorial Secondary. It would be good if other schools we can adapt the same. That, that would be really good. Yeah. Um, again, thank you all so much to Golfspan. Um, Divin, working behind the scene, thank I'd like you. to thank you all very, very uh, much for tuning in and everything. We want to take condolences to the Kobe Bryant family and those who died in the helicopter crash yesterday. Condolences no. to all those families. Of course, so many are affected by that. Because you know the is morning. Yes, indeed. Thank, yes. Thank you, Tracy, and I hope that we will be able to make a difference. Continue to keep the good work up. Thank you, and you thank all you. as well. Rosie and... Uh, Miss Cole, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you I'm all. standing in solidarity. I have all my black and white. I know to violence yes. against teachers. I know to violence against teachers. And thank we'll you. Teachers we'll, are we'll, we'll be supporting our we teachers. We must not beat them. We'll be supporting our <laughs> teachers as they go to court. Our teachers as they go to court this week. So, yes, we continue to wear black and white. Got it. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you all I so much. Solidarity. And good night, uh -huh. everyone. <laughs>